My discovery of Death of a Wish was strange. I went from seeing it the first time on social media, to trying out the demo, to finding out the developer, me less than three has been following me for some time, and then getting a free copy. From the demo to the full game experience, one word comes to mind when describing Death of a Wish. It was after naming who was important to me that I felt this way. Death of a Wish has an interesting aesthetic. In my experience, I haven't seen other games with this style either, besides the developer himself. The music from the tutorial alone got me in some sort of mood too. I can feel the angst, and I love it. However, I was feeling iffy on the visual style as it could possibly mess with me, but the controls weren't hard to wrap my head around. I had different kinds of attacks, some use the resource and others don't. Avoiding damage on paper seemed easy too. In practice, at least for me, I had to get acquainted with the rewind system to restart the encounter because the graphics would become overwhelming. I I love and hate the aesthetic of Death of a Wish. To paraphrase what Me Less Than 3 told me, the game would not exist without the style, partially for practical reasons and partially for artistic ones. I kind of developed this style as a way to get into making art for my own games, and I was prototyping with Luca Born of a Dream. The game design coalesced to something I thought would work for the presentation. Death of a Wish expounded upon the style in ways I thought looked good or further emphasized the emotional tone. Being able to teach yourself art to have your own assets for game development is great and even inspiring. The aesthetic of Death of a Wish is not bad in a vacuum. The visual design gives the game a distinct look. Paired with the music that accompanies the game, the religious imagery, with the crosses, the maps I ran across on my journey, and the opening show qualities of the game that I love. But I would hate the style during combat because there would be too much going on at all times. Fighting different monsters, trying to recognize their patterns, only seemed possible if the background wasn't too noisy and special effects weren't overlapping with one another. The visual cue for knowing when to use a defensive option gets filtered out by that visual noise that bodied me more than anything in Death of a Wish, and honestly it became my worst enemy. Clarity is important, and I believe this game can have it in spite of the purposely messy aesthetic. Christian, the playable character, character, having thicker outlines, and making the indicators during combat more bold and brighter would be a good start. However, after that, I'm not sure what else to adjust for the visuals to help things be more clear, without ruining the aesthetic you made. I only felt like something needed to happen only because it was preventing me from fully enjoying the gameplay. However, on its own, I love the combat. I was initially inspired by Nuclear Throne, but various factors led me to pursue a more melee-focused direction, inspired by Bloodborne and Hyperlight Drifter. I then really got into Bayonetta, and the rest is history. Death of a Wish definitely has some Sekiro in it too. Now, I've only played Bloodborne, Sekiro, and Hyperlight Drifter out of the five mentioned. Not like Nuclear Throne matters all that much, because the emphasis was placed on melee combat over ranged. But with the games I did play, I can feel that DNA. Let me explain the combat to this hack and slash because it will be a lot to go through. For offensive options, you have light and heavy attacks, hold actions, and you're familiar. Both hold actions and using the familiar use the charge meter. All the attacks that you do will bring down the break gauge, and breaking the enemy's poise will stun them for a short time where you can get in the big damage.
For defensive options, you have a dodge. This dodge can be used conventionally to evade, or you can dodge into the enemy for a parry. Parrying will also bring down the break gauge. There's also a healing system with rewinds and essence. The rewind lets you redo a whole fight or a phase, and the health essence is a more conventional heal. You will always have more rewinds than essence, and if you use all the essence, you cannot use the rewind mechanic to get them back. Once they're gone, they're gone at least for that fight. The aria and stats that you have are extremely important to how you use everything I mentioned prior. Think of aria as different weapons you would have in a hack and slash. These aria, or different weapons, use two stats to dictate how they deal damage, and you can have two equipped at all times. All aria can be combined with one another for different effects. Any aria that has synergy will have a different moveset. Flip-flopping them will do the same as well. And then getting to the stats, when you level up, you could put points into health for increasing the HP amount, you could put points into charge, which will increase the amount there, as well as boosting the hold actions. Increasing power or mind will increase the damage scaling of Aria, physical and ephemeral, respectively. Increasing power will also give you more guard break on heavy attacks, along with giving you hit stun resistance, while mind boosts the passive effects that Aria have. And then there's Sync, which increases the fire rate of familiars, decreases their cost, and increases the amount of charge that you get back per hit. Death of a Wish has plenty of passives for you to equip and work with to make your build special to you. And that's why I love the combat. I was able to play how I wanted. I'll admit, I gravitated towards the parry option because it made a very clear audio cue when I did it correctly. Stance breaking became super satisfying to do, so I built my character around that mechanic. I made sure my power and charge were high, along with the mind stat too. In short, I had all offensive options prioritized. Passive abilities that I equipped made it easier for me to double down on that playstyle as well. Having to go through consecutive battles made everything challenging for the right reasons. Pulling off combos when switching between Aria and mixing between light, heavy, hold actions, and familiar attacks to increase the style point meter was satisfying to pull off. There is nothing I can say bad about the gameplay in itself. It was just that good. And I can also say that the story was pretty good too. The story of Death of a Wish was a lot better than I thought. Besides one of the chapters, multiple times throughout the game's story, I would love and then get quickly annoyed by those new characters. And in that sense, the story was like a roller coaster. I would get annoyed by the characters, actions and reactions to the main character, but I would say at the halfway point, it all made sense. Lily was the one that annoyed me the most. She will make Christian, or Chris as she calls him, think about his actions on others. However, after a while, everything that she was saying wasn't coming from a place of kindness, or trying to get Christian to think about others. <laughs> but at a certain point, I said out loud, why are you like this? And fortunately, that question got answered. I do, however, feel that there were parts of the story, such as the beginning of the B-side, could have been told a little bit differently, like making that cutscene a little bit shorter. But all in all, that roller coaster ride was enjoyable. Me less than three. I'm glad you told me about your game and let me play it for free. You made something special, even if admittedly, the visuals got in my way sometimes. I do know that you won't use the style mainly anymore, but I'm glad you won't retire it completely. The style can be used at a place in time that can be used for great effect. So don't completely forget about it, okay? And thanks again for the key and your input on making the game. That said, Death of a Wish is $19.99 on Steam and it's on the Nintendo Switch, if you're interested. But ultimately, that choice is yours. That's it from me. I'll see you in the next one.
Hey, if you want to go down that indie game rabbit hole, consider clicking that playlist. Trust me, it'll be worth your while.